You know, often we learn that through circumstances of life that all things work together for good to those that love the Lord and are called according to His purposes. And a lot of times people will take that apart and they'll say, well, you know, you got to be according to His purpose or you got to be this or you got to be that. And one thing that I find that's greater than all of these is that it is God who works in you both to do and to will of His good pleasure. So He chooses to work in you to accomplish for you and to work with you to the benefit of all those around you as well as to your growth and maturity and development in Him and the knowledge of Him. Because, you see, He doesn't just care about using you and then abusing you and throwing you away. And He doesn't care about just the other people, but He cares about you. He cares what's going on with you, so He chooses to participate in your life. And then you, gradually, as you learn that you love Him and that He really does love you, that you greatly appreciate the moments and times where he chooses to show you how he's using you to affect others also. Because whether you know it or not, you will, by all of your circumstances in every single minute of your life, affect someone somewhere. Your light. Light can't help it. It's going to shine. Your salt. Salt can't help it. It's going to do something. It's going to cause an action or reaction in some way. So because you are like that, because God is in you, because God is at work both to do and to will of his good pleasure through you and in you, then accomplishing what he will, you learn as you get older in the Lord to just accept the circumstances and see how they can be turned or you can turn yourself either into the wind or run with the wind or to go through the wind in the sense of allowing the circumstances to be used for the glory of God. That you can always turn your attention, you can always turn the focus of your spirit back to God to find out, what do you want to do, Lord? Should I, if I was out on an ocean, should I tack into the wind? Should I tack away from the wind? Should I zigzag so that I can make progress through the wind? Or should I turn around and run with the wind? Or should I drop anchor? And should I drop lee anchor? And starboard anchor? Should I drop forward? <laughs> or what should I do? Drop sail? Or what would you have me do, God? And in those ways, then, we know that all things, then, are good that God does because then we can see the accomplishment of them in the bigger picture. Not the small one. Sometimes you can't see much farther than that. But in the big one. So in streams, they that go down to the sea in ships that do business in great waters, they see the works of the Lord and his wonder in the deep. He is but an apprentice and no master in the heart who has not learned that every wind that blows is fair for heaven. The only thing that helps nobody is a dead calm. Remember that we have no more faith at any time than we have in our hour of trial. All that will not bear to be tested is a mere carnal confidence. Fair weather faith is no faith. So the Lord sends us out to sea to test the waters, so to speak, of our life, of our faith, of our growth and development in Him. And we need all but ask him, the captain of our ship, how would you have us to turn to? Leeward, starboard, forward, backward, into the wind, out of the wind? Lord, show us today how you would have us to be and to go forward even in the midst of a conflict of interest that so many circumstances might be. Whether we hear them or whether we yield to them or whether we just do what the Lord would have us to do today.